hope you are doing amazing. Super pumped up to dive into chapter five today, tonight, wherever you are in the world, into this book right here, The Voice of Knowledge by Don Miguel Ruiz. If you've already read this book, let us know in the comments. Let me know in the comments if this is going to be your first time jumping in to, to listen into this book. Let me know in the comments. If you've been following along the past four chapters with us, let me know as well. And if you haven't, we've organized under playlists. You'll be able to see in order all the Read With Me sessions, not only from this book, Voice of Knowledge, in order so you can fashion track and get caught up with us because we're here about five six nights a week six days a week monday through saturday reading with you so we're doing two books a month in the year 2022 one on personal freedom one on financial freedom so if you're looking to achieve personal and financial freedom in your life there's no better place to listen and be than reading along to the books that allow us to achieve that, whether it's one sentence or one paragraph or one book out of the 22 that just catapult you to the next level or give you an awareness that you've never gotten to transform your life. That's why we show up every single day, Monday through Saturday here with you. And yeah, we're just, that's our, that's our goal and purpose to do. Um, throughout this year is to provide so much value and to provide knowledge that's out there uh, and be able to equip you with the knowledge and the and the understanding to achieve your goals that you have for your life. And so let's dive in to chapter five right now into the voice of knowledge. All right. My name is Vanessa Black and so excited and happy and grateful that you are here with me for the next 20, 25 minutes here tonight. All right. So let's do this. The storyteller exploring the characters in the story. This is page 57. If you do have your physical copy on you, if you don't, you can go ahead and purchase it. We'll put a link in the description below for you. That night in the desert is what I call my return to common sense. I had been living in a story of my own creation my entire life without even noticing it. Once I had this awareness, I started to question everything in my story. Is it true that I am what I believe I am? Is what I believe about everybody else true? I review the story of my life and I didn't like all of the drama that I had created. I wanted to reinvent myself. The first step was to take away from my story what I felt was not true and to find out what was true. I felt was not true and to find out what was true. I discovered that what I call the frame of the dream is true because our creator creates the frame and it's the same for everybody. Our agreements about what to call the objects in the frame are also true because this is how we describe our virtual reality. The letter A is an A because we say so and we agree. The word dog describes a type of animal that we agree to call a dog. Knowledge used in this way is just a tool for communication. But almost everything that is abstract is a lie. What is right or wrong? What is good or bad? What is beautiful or ugly? I discovered that more than 90% of the concepts I had stored in my mind were based on lies, especially the concept I believe about myself. I can do this. I cannot do that. I am this way. I will never be that way. The problem is not really knowledge. The problem is what contaminates knowledge. And that is a lie. I could see that there were a lot of nonsense in the way we learn to write our stories. How does this happen? Before I was born in the physical body, a whole society of storytellers was already here. The story was ongoing, and from their story, I learned how to create my own. The storytellers who are here before us teach us how to be human. First, they tell us what we are, a boy or a girl. Then they tell us who we are and who we should or shouldn't be. They teach us to be a woman or how to be a man. They tell us to be a proper woman a decent woman, a strong man, a brave man. 
They give us a name, an identity, and they tell us the role that we are playing in their story. Hmm. They prepare us to live in the human jungle, to compete with one another, to control one another, to impose our will, to fight against our own kind. Of course, I believed what the storytellers told me. Why would I not believe them? They filled me with knowledge and I used that knowledge to copy their style and create my art in a similar way. I heard my older brother sharing their strong opinions with father. I tried to talk and they shut me up right away. Forget it, I had no voice. As I said before, I could hardly wait to have an opinion of my own. It didn't matter what the opinion was, I just wanted to impose my opinion and to defend my opinion with all of that self-righteousness. As children, we witness the way other people relate to one another. And this becomes normal behavior for us. We see our older sisters and brothers, our aunts and uncles, our parents and neighbors in romantic relationships. They suffer, but they believe they love. We see them fight, and we can't wait to grow up and do the same thing. The mentality when we are children is, wow, that looks like fun. All of the drama we suffer in our relationships is because we witness so many lies when we are innocent, and we use these lies to form our own story. I continue to study the story of my life. And what I discover is that everything in my story is about me. Of course, it has to be that way because I am the center of my perception and the story is from my point of view. The main character who lives in my story is based on someone who really exists. That is true. But what I believe about me is not true. It's a story. I create the character of Miguel, and it's just an image based on what I agree to believe about myself. I project my image to other people in society, and other people perceive that projection, modify it, and react to me according to their own stories. Then I discovered that because it's my story, I also create an image for every secondary character who lives in my story. The secondary characters are based on people who really exist, but everything I believe about them is a story of my own creation. I create the character of my mother, the character of the, my father, the character of each of my brothers and sisters, my friends, my beloved, even my dog and my cat. I meet a person, I qualify the person, I make judgments about the person based on all of the knowledge in my mind. This is how I keep their image in my memory. In my story, you are a secondary character who is my creation, and I interact with you. You project what you want me to believe about you, and I modify it depending on what I believe. Now, I'm sure that you are what I believe you are. I might even say, I know you, when the truth is that I don't know you at all. I only know the story I create about you. And it took some time for me to understand that I only know the story I create about myself. For years, I thought that I knew myself until I discovered that it was not the truth. I only knew what I believed about myself. Then I discovered that I am not what I believe I am. And it was very interesting and also very frightening when I discovered that I really don't know anybody and they don't know me either. The truth is that we only know what we know and the only thing we really know is our story. But how many times have you heard people say, I know my children very well. They would never do something like that. Do you think that you really know your children? Do you think that you really know your partner? Well, you're probably certain that your partner doesn't know you. You may be certain that nobody really knows you, but do you really know yourself? Do you really know anybody? I used to believe that I knew my mother, but the only thing I know about her is the role I assigned to her to play in my story. I have an image for the character who plays the role of my mother. Everything I know about her is what I believe about her. I have no idea what she has in her head. Only my mother knows what she is and surely she doesn't know either. The same is true for you. Your mother can swear that she knows you very well, 
But is it true? I don't think so. You know that she has no idea what you have in your mind. She only knows what she believes about you, which means she knows almost nothing. <clears throat> you are a secondary character in her story and you play the role of the son or the daughter. Your mother creates an image of you and she wants you to fit the image she creates. You can relate, put it in the comments. If you are not what she wants you to be according to her story, guess what happens? She feels hurt by you and she tries to make you fit her image. That is why she feels the need to control you, to tell you what to do and what not to do, to give you all of her opinions about the way you should live your life. When you know that it's just her story, why bother defending your point of view? It doesn't matter what you say, she will not believe you anymore. How can she believe your story when it isn't her point of view? The best you can do is to change the conversation, enjoy her presence, and love her the way she is. When you have this awareness, you will forgive your mother for whatever she did to you according to your story. Of course, just through the act of forgiveness, your relationship with your mother will change completely. Once I discovered that people are creating and living in their own story, how could I judge them any longer? How could I take anything personally when I know that I am only a secondary character in their story? I know that when they talk to me, they are really talking to the secondary character in their story. And whatever people say about me is just a projection of their image of me. It has nothing to do with me. I don't waste my time taking anything personally. I focus my attention on creating my own story. Each of us has the right to create our own life story, to express ourselves through our art. But how many times do we try to make the secondary characters in our story fit the images and roles we create for them? We want our children to be the way we want them to be. Well, bad news. That will never happen. And when our partner doesn't fit the image we create for him or her, we feel angry or hurt. Then we try to control our partner. We have to tell our partner what to do, what not to do, what to believe, what not to believe. We even tell our partner how to walk, how to dress, how to speak. We do the same thing with our children and it becomes a war of control. Life in this physical body is very short, even if we live to be 100 years old. And I discovered this. I decided not to waste my time creating conflict, mainly with the people I love. I want to enjoy them, and I do that by loving them for who they are, not for what they believe. The story they create is not important. I don't care if my mother's story doesn't agree with my story. I love her and I enjoy her presence. I know not to impose my story on her. I don't impose my story on anybody. I respect her story, I listen to her story, and I don't make it wrong. If other people try to write your story, it means they don't respect you. They don't respect you because they consider that you are not a good artist, that you cannot write your own story, even though you were born to write your own story. Respect comes directly from love. It is one of the greatest expressions of love. Respect is one of the greatest expressions of love. If you're getting something out of this and you're getting maybe an awareness, a breakthrough, insights, go ahead and share this video to somebody that you think you know, would benefit from hearing this information because it's super powerful. I remember, and we're not done with the chapter yet, but I remember reading this and I would always tell myself, you know, I'm shy and when people ask me to dance or, you know, I was at like a bar mitzvah back in the day or quinceanera, I'd be the one on the sidelines, just like kind of not dancing, just watching everybody. And people would ask me, you know, why aren't you dancing? And I would say, I'm shy, I'm shy, I'm shy. So I repeated that so much that I, I that, that was like my identity. That's who I believed I was until I read this information. I was like, I'm not shy, that's a lie. You know, I'm, I can be however I wanna be. I can express how I wanna be. I'm, I don't have to be shy. I can choose to be, right? But I, that's not who I am. So that was powerful.
I also respect myself and I don't allow anybody to write my story. My story is my responsibility. It's my creation. I am the artist and I respect my own art. I can compare my art with other people's art, but I make my own choices and I take responsibility for my creation. When I first had the awareness that I didn't like my story, I thought, okay, I'm the author. I will change my story. And I tried and I failed. And I tried again and I failed again many times because I was trying to change all of the secondary characters in my story. I thought that if I changed the secondary characters, I was changing my story and it was not true at all. The problem is not with the secondary characters in our story. What we see in them is just a projection of what we believe and that's a secondary problem. Our main problem is with the main character of the story. If we don't like our story, it's because we don't like what we believe about the main character. If we don't like our story, it's because we don't like what we believe about the main character. There is only one way to change our story, and that is by changing what we believe about ourselves. This is a big step in awareness. If we clean up the lies that we believe about ourselves, almost like magic, the lies that we believe about everybody else will change. Then the secondary, secondary characters in our story will change, but this doesn't mean that we exchange one person for another person. The secondary character stays the same. What changes is what we believe about them. This changes what we project onto them. And with that change, the interaction we have with them changes. And with that change, the way they perceive us changes. And with that change, the secondary character who we represent in their story changes. Just like a wave that ripples across the water, we change ourselves and everything else changes. You are the only one who can change your story and you do this by changing your relationship with yourself. Every time you change a main character in your story, just like magic, the whole story starts to change in order to adapt to the new main character. This is easy to prove because the main character is changing anyway, but it's changing by itself without your awareness. The way you perceive the world when you are eight or nine years old is not the same way you perceive the world at 15 or 16. When you are in your early 20s, your perception changes again. You see the world differently when you are first married or when you have your first child. You change the way you change what you believe about yourself. Your point of view changes the way you express yourself changes and your reactions change. Everything changes. And the change can be so dramatic that it seems like two different dreams and two different people. You also change the secondary characters in your story. The way you see your father and your mother when you are 10 changes when you are 20 and 30 and 40 and it keeps changing. Every single day you rewrite the story. As soon as you wake up in the morning, you have to find out what day it is. You have to find out where you are and where the story was before you went to sleep, just to keep going with the story with your life. You have to go to work, you have to do whatever activity you have planned for that day, and you keep writing your own story, but without awareness. Everything in your story is constantly changing, including the story you tell yourself about who you are. 20 years ago, the storyteller told you who you are, and you believed it. Today, the storyteller is telling you another story about yourself and it's completely different. Of course, the storyteller will say, oh, that's because I have more experience. Now I know more, now I am wise. It's just another story. Your whole life has been a story. If you talk about something that happened to you when you were a child, your father or mother or brother or sister will have a different story. This is because we only share the frame of the dream. If two of you start talking about something that happened 20 years ago, it may sound as if you were talking about two different events. Your father claims, this is what happened. This is the truth. And you say, no, 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 you're, you're wrong. 
This is what really happened. Who's right and who is wrong? Well, both of you are right according to your stories. If 100 people perceive the same event, you hear a hundred different stories and everybody claims that his or her story is the true story. Of course, it's only true for that person and your story is only true for you. But the voice of knowledge starts searching for everything in your mind to make yourself right. You even look for allies from the outside to join you in your crusade to be right and to make the other person wrong. Why try to justify what you believe? You don't need to make others wrong because you already know that in their story, they are right. In your story, you are right. Then being right or wrong is over. You no longer have to defend what you believe. Wow. So much that from that paragraph can relate to what's taking place like in the world today. Just like so much of that on social media and, you know, so many different things. It's powerful. He says, you know, being right or wrong is over. You no longer have to defend what you believe. When we reach this level of awareness, the level, right, it is easier not to take what other people say personally. We know that every human around us is a storyteller and that everyone distorts the truth. What we share with one another is just our perception. It is just our point of view. And it's completely normal because the only thing we have is our point of view. This is how we describe whatever we witness. Our points of view depends upon our programming, which is everything in our personal tree of knowledge. Our point of view also depends upon how we are feeling emotionally and physically, and it changes from one moment to the next. It changes when we are angry or upset. It changes again when we are happy. Our perception changes when we are tired or hungry. We humans are constantly modifying what we say, how we react, what we project. We even modify what everybody else says. You know, the way we create our stories is very interesting. We have a tendency to distort everything we perceive to make it agree with what we already believe. We fix it to make it agree with our lies. It is amazing how we do this. We distort the image of each of our children. We distort the image of our partner. And we distort the image of our parents. We even distort the image of our dog or cat. People come to me and say, oh, I have learned so much from my dog. My dog is almost human. He's almost talking now. And they really mean it. How many people take their dog to a pet psychologist because the dog has so many issues? Do you see how we distort our story? The story is based on reality because yes, we have an emotional connection with it. But it's not true that our dog almost talks or that our dog is almost we talk about our children, we say, my children are the best. They do this and this and that. Another person hearing this may say, no, look at mine. As artists, we, with our own style, we have the right to distort our story. And this is the best we can do anyway. That distortion is our point of view. And for us, it has meaning. We project our story and we see we project our story and by seeing the distortion, we can sometimes return to our own truth. And who says that this distortion of our story is not art? It is art and it is beautiful. Humans are the storytellers of God. There is something that exists inside all of us that can make an interpretation of everything we perceive. We are like God's journalist trying to explain whatever happens around us. It is our nature to make up stories, and this is why we create languages. This is why all of the world religions create beautiful mythology. We try to express what we perceive and share what we perceive, and this action is happening all the time. When we meet somebody new, we want to know that person's story almost right away. We ask all of the key questions. What do you do? Where do you live? How many children do you have? This interrogation goes both ways. <clears throat> we can hardly wait to tell the person our point of view, to express what we feel, to share our own story. When we experience something we like, we want to tell everybody about it. That's why we talk so much to, to one another. Even when we are by ourselves, we have the need to share our story and we share it with ourselves. We see a beautiful sunset and we say, oh, what a beautiful sunset. 
Nobody's listening except us, but we talk to ourselves anyway. We also have the need to know other people's stories because we like to compare notes, or we can say that as artists, we like to compare our art. We see a movie, we like it, we ask for a friend who went with us, what did you think about the movie? Well, maybe our friend has another point of view and tells us things about the movie that we didn't see. Very soon we change our mind and say, well, that movie was not as good as I thought it was. We are constantly exchanging information and modifying our story in this way. This is how the dream of humanity evolves. Our personal dream mixes with the dream of other dreamers, and this modifies the bigger dream of society. You are dreaming the story of your life, and I can assure you that it's an art. Your art is the art of creating stories and sharing stories. If I met you today, I would see the real you behind your story. I would see you as a force of life creating art through you. Your story could be the best screenplay for any movie because all of us are professional storytellers. But I know that whatever you tell me is just the story. It's a great reminder, awareness to always have, you know, throughout all of our days. I don't have to believe your story, but I can listen to your story and enjoy it. I can go to the movies to see The Godfather and I don't believe it, but I can enjoy it, right? What I'm sharing with you is my personal process about how I recover in my personal freedom. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my story, but it's just a story and it's only true for me. Something I find very interesting is that every time I share the story, it is different. I try to distort it as little as possible, but even my own story changes. Despite this distortion, if you can understand it, you can compare it to your own art. Many times we don't see our own creation. We don't see our own lives, but sometimes in the reflection of somebody else, we can see our own ma magnificence. By experiencing the love of another person, we can see how great we are. From one artist to another artist, we might see that it's possible to improve our own art. Once we have the awareness to see our own story, we discover there is another way of creating the main character. Without awareness, there is nothing we can do because the story is so powerful that the story writes itself. We create the story, we give our personal power to the story, and then the story is living our lives. But with awareness, we recover the control of our story. That is the good news. If we don't like our story, we are the authors, we can change it. Wow. If, if that just freed you, if that just freed you, you know, it freed me, like just the words, the way he creates or wrote his story of how he recovered his freedom, freedom allowed me to recover my own freedom and so i'm sure many of you several of you something you know could have hit that it allowed you to recover your own freedom and if not you know never underestimate the power of planting a seed okay so let's dive into the points to ponder to recap chapter five of the storyteller you want to take notes, take notes, write them down, listen to this again and take notes. This is something that I remember I had to hear and hear and hear over again. Get the book if you haven't gotten it so you can do your own notes if that's a way that, that you learn. Um, I know everybody's different. Everybody has their own story. Everybody has their own truth. Okay. Points to ponder. You are the author of an ongoing story you tell yourself. In your story, everything is about you and has to be that way because you are the center of your perception. The story is told from your point of view. You create an image for the secondary characters in your story and you assign them a role to play. The only thing you know about the secondary character is the story you create about them. The truth is that you don't know anyone and nobody knows you either. You don't know anyone and nobody knows you either. Three, respect is one of the greatest expressions of love. If other people try to write your story, it means they don't respect you. They consider that you are not a good artist who can write your own story, even though you were born to write your own story. 
next. The only way to change your story is to change what you believe about yourself. The only way to change your story is to change what you believe about yourself. If you clean up the lies you believe about yourself, the lies you believe about everybody else will change. Every time you change the main character of your story, the whole story changes to adapt to the new character. Don't waste your time taking anything personally. When other people talk to you, they are really talking to the secondary character in their story. Whatever people say about you is just a projection of their image of you. It has nothing to do with you. And lastly, humans are the storytellers of God. It is our nature to make up stories, to interpret everything we perceive without awareness. We give our personal power to the story and the story writes itself. With awareness, we recover the control of our story we see that we are the authors, and if we don't like our story, we change it. The humans are the storytellers of God. What a beautiful, freeing chapter. Incredible. Well, that's it for this evening. Hope you have a beautiful evening. Sweet dreams. If you felt the power of that and you want to share it, go ahead and express your love to someone else so that they too could possibly um you know resonate with this chapter and so excited that you're here appreciate your time we're going to be diving in tomorrow um to chapter six inner peace okay this is going to be a powerful chapter so make sure that you are here you're able to listen to when you have a moment and remember again under playlist, you'll see all the Read With Me sessions that we're currently doing in order for both books, The Voice of Knowledge and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So let us know which book that you're resonating with most right now. Is it Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or is it The Voice of Knowledge? You know, people are in different places of their own journey. And so would love to know your feedback, which book, um, you know, you're really getting the most out of right now, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or the voice of knowledge and anything that really throughout this, these read with me sessions that really just impacted you in any way, feel free to share it, like, and subscribe. All right. We'll see you next time. Have a beautiful evening, sweet dreams, and talk to you soon.